Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's another unfortunate Monday, and uh, at least we made it through the first day of the work week, only four to go. Uh, yeah, I always hate Mondays. <laughs> Monday morning's never fun for me anyway, personally. Hope you had a good Monday, though, at least um, a little bit more fun than mine was. Anyway, today I'm just kind of filming as I continue to do more Rocket Lab research. I figured it would be interesting to compare my DCF that I made several weeks back, or at least updated several weeks back, with a few others floating around out there, see how my predictions compare to some other people's. If uh, I'm way off compared to a lot of other people, that might be a good indicator to show that you know, something's wrong with how I'm thinking about things, whether it's forecasting revenues or, you know, the percentage of the margins or it could be anything. So that's why I thought it would be interesting to go through, compare some DCFs and see how we're looking. Before we dive into that, though, every subscriber is very much appreciated. So if you're not a subscriber, uh, I hope you will consider subscribing by the end of the video if you do find it interesting and informative. With that out of the way, let's dive in to some DCF comparisons for Rocket Lab. Okay guys, so here we are looking at a few DCFs and some research. As I said again, I'm just kind of going through this for my own benefit as well as filming it at the same time as any thoughts I may have. Hopefully this sparks some thoughts for you and you can share any ideas with me. Uh, I do you know, fully openly say that I'm still learning here. I'm not a, you know, business school graduate or anything like that, but I do try my best to learn about valuing companies and uh, going back to the numbers in terms of earnings and not just, you know, saying I think it's good because it's a cool company and that kind of thing. So uh, if you didn't see my previous video going over my own DCF spreadsheet, I do suggest you check it out because you'll have a lot more understanding of what's going on here. But basically, I estimate out from, you know, 2024 all the way to 2029 here, how much revenues I think they'll make, subtract the costs in terms of cost of goods sold, SG&A, R&D expenses, down to your total cost or operating income, if you will. And uh, then you figure out your EBITDA, earnings before interest, depreciation, amortization, go from there into net income. And now once you have that net income number, what you do is divide it by the total number of shares outstanding at that year. That will give you an earnings per share number. And you multiply that EPS number by a price to earnings ratio to get a stock price at that year. But it's a little bit more complicated than that still because let's say that in 2028, I think the stock price is going to be $25 just for example. Well, that's in 2028 dollars. So you want to back that off until f you figure out what it's worth today. And for that, you use a discount rate or WAC. Basically, what you do is uh, remove a certain amount amount of value each year. The time value of money is basically what we're thinking about here to back off, you know, what a future stock might be worth into what it's worth to you today. So for that, I use basically 15%, uh, backing it off 15 every single year. I find that to be a very safe conservative number. I've seen a lot of numbers that are less than that, but I just wanted to be on the safe side. So going through all that, and by the way, I did also gradually increase the shares outstanding count as Rocket Lab does, you know, issue new shares regularly as a part of compensation for executives and, you know, purchases and stuff like that. So I kind of tracked how many shares have historically been issued every quarter and kind of continued on that same rate, which seemed reasonable to land at a valuation in the future. So going through all that, as I did in that previous video, if you want more detail, I'm sure you can find it in my video history. Uh, I used a 38 price to earnings ratio. I landed on a terminal value in 2028, $24 per share, because I, I wanted to be extremely safe with everything. I wanted to make sure I'm pleasantly surprised and not unpleasantly surprised. So, you know, if I if I follow this valuation and I believe in it, 24, I'm happy to buy today for sure. That brings the present value using this 15% number to $10 per share. And hopefully there could be room for upside down the line if they do outperform my estimates. 
and you know maybe this 15 percent number is a little too aggressive and and th there's many other factors at play maybe the price to earnings multiple could go higher than this 38 pretty reasonable depending on how fast they are growing and i do expect them to grow pretty quickly in the future anyway all that uh going over my own valuation but let's take a look at the comparison here again this is from that space stocks community discord do suggest you check it out if you are interested in investing in space stocks they have a great thing going there and uh definitely not trying to say mine is better than theirs or anything like that i'm just curious to see how they think about things differently than i do or at least whoever in the community did put together their dcf so they right up front, and by the way, I like that you can, you know, see the, the implied share price right at the start. They're saying $7.63 per share, dollars per share today is the fair value, whereas I had $10 per share. So it looks like they are not as bullish as me. Let's continue to dig a little bit deeper, figure out why. Well, they have a few different switches here. You can change the number on that changes things. They have a networking capital number. They have a weighted average cost of capital or WAC, which is the same as my discount rate. Theirs, as you can see, is actually lower than mine. So I think they're playing it probably a bit more accurately, whereas I was you know, being aggressive to be on the safe side of things. Terminal growth rate is the growth rate it will continue at after the end of this period because no company does, you know, grow in perpetuity. You always put in a terminal growth rate when you do a DCF like this. Um, let's take a look at their revenue numbers versus mine, see what we can figure out here. So for two, 2023, uh, I have a feeling this hasn't been updated maybe since the last earnings because their revenue number is uh, a little bit higher than mine and I did update it based on this most recent guidance. So when they guide for the next quarter, they're usually extremely accurate. You know, I think they reduced their guidance based on that anomaly and stuff like that. Maybe this number... Um, was pre-anomaly i'm not positive on that but they do have a little bit more revenue than me for 2023 2024 once again they have 417 million i have 392 million so they're still leading me in terms of how much revenue is expected uh 2025 another big growth year for their model they do have 633 million i've got 587 uh 2026 they're at one 1.02 billion i'm at 800 million 2027 1.44 i'm at 1.1 2028 i'm at 1.5 up here they are at 1.7 so actually getting a little bit closer here on the tail end of this model 2029 they're at 2.1 and i'm at 2.0 so interesting to see and by the way i didn't model all the way out to 2030 i thought you know this was a long enough time frame to continue with but um they have more growth early on and i'm kind of catching up to them in the revenue expectations later on in the decade a lot of that for me at least is through neutron i do have pretty conservative estimates for the scaling up of their launch numbers and then i have it really ramping up later in the decade a few years down the line as they really nail that reusability and increase that cadence launching those constellations into orbit so uh, interesting to see that my revenue numbers are worse than theirs slightly, but their valuation is lower than mine, meaning that they must think the margins are going to be worse than I did on that revenue and that like less cash will be kept as profits. That's the only way it would really make sense. It does look like they do expect a uh, positive EBIT number, which is earnings before interest and taxes in 2025 whereas uh, i was using ebitda here which is interest before taxes depreciation and amortization uh slightly different but i had a positive number there 2026 so there i guess go you know profitable might be slightly ahead of mine although these numbers are a little different it's not an apples to apples comparison obviously and they do break out a conservative case a base case as well as an optimistic case which is nice you can go through and you know go through those different 
possibilities yourself. Anyway, I just thought this was interesting, kind of nice to see we're pretty on the same page for revenue numbers, I'm, at least towards the end of the model. Uh, they have a little bit more aggressive growth early on where I'm kind of more conservative, but maybe I'm more aggressive when it comes to the margin percentages. Maybe that's something that bears looking at. I do think we have pretty solid margin, gross margin numbers from the company when it comes to guidance at least for the launch side, but on the space system side, there's a bit more room for uncertainty. Perhaps I could look at potentially lowering that in more of a uh, worst case scenario type situation. It is nice to see though, uh, at the end of the day, they do think their upside for the company, 78% versus today's value. So they are as well bullish on the company. Now, this next one isn't a full DCF, but I do still find it to be an interesting channel. They are called Nanalyze. They do analyze a lot of tech disruptive growth style companies, companies that are not yet profitable, and they have a very no-nonsense approach. They don't want your hype. They don't want your, uh, you know, Wall Street bets kind of stuff. They just want to bring it back to the numbers and the valuation. So I do enjoy them for that. They have previously said that Rocket Lab was looking a little expensive to them, but now it's looking a little better, at least in on, on their most recent analysis. So uh, they go with a simple valuation ratio to look at some of these things, which is basically if they annualize the most recent quarter's revenue and then figure out the price to sales on that. And they land on seven, which is comparing to five for their average catalog. So it isn't too overvalued at this point for them. Uh, now, a few years after going public. Um, so yeah, they're pretty pretty impressed with management's handling of the most recent anomaly. They do still have some concerns, obviously, and this isn't a full DCF, obviously, but, you know, the valuation ratio is, according to them, entering a more favorable range, at least. Uh, they continue on towards the end, saying now appears to be a reasonable time to buy because it doesn't appear over tri overpriced. They're making positive momentum with key metric trends. And if you want exposure to the space industry for launch, there isn't a ton of other options. Um, not because some unqualified, inexperienced clout chaser said that you should. So <laughs> don't don't buy it because I said you should, I guess. Um, this is me just sharing research here. So uh, interesting to see that Nanalyze, very much a, a channel that, you know, looks critically at all companies and doesn't jump on any hype trains, seems to think they're now starting to look more attractive. I also wanted to take a quick look at Simply Wall Street. They do have some kind of auto-generated DCFs for most stocks. They are a pretty good website. There is a referral link in the description down below. Wanted to see what they're showing with Rocket Lab right now. We can see uh, price to sales ratio. It is looking a little bit high for Rocket Lab compared to uh, industry peers. However, I think what you have to take into account here is that they're comparing it to say Kratos, uh, Spirit, Aero Systems, and some of these others. Rocket Lab is very much a growth company. Some of these others may not be growing their revenues like Rocket Lab is. Uh, I know I don't believe Spirit, the the airline, is that's for sure. Um, and we can see historical price to sales has come down nicely since that massive spike when it did go public. However, they do think, at least based on the average industry numbers a fair price to sales ratio would be more like 2.3 where this is nine so from that metric they do consider it overpriced however later on this is going to surprise you uh, they do show fair value somehow as being 34.51 per share um this you know, I'm I'm as much of a Rocket Lab bull as anyone, and this doesn't make any sense to me, I have to say. So I think they have uh, some kind of automated formulas doing their DCFs on companies and landing on a valuation. And I think, personally, this is way off. You know, I hate to say it, but I, I don't think Rocket Lab's worth $34 today. At least I wouldn't be buying it at $34. Uh, they do have some data here going over their calculation talking about, you know, basing their numbers on 
what the analysts are saying. But going from 2025, 2026, 27, there's only one analyst apparently with forecasts going that far out. So uh, I don't really put too much stock into that. And then they have some estimate numbers here. Um, and then this is their terminal value calculation and then present value of terminal value. So, um, yeah, it looks like their, their WAC number is quite low as well. So, uh, personally, this is the one that I would say is not like the others. And while I do think Simply Wall Street is a pretty good site, you know, I would not, would not go out off of this valuation. Uh, I think everyone should kind of build their own to really understand deeply what's going on here. And then we also have the analyst price targets over the next 12 months. Uh, we can see at least the analysts are, you know, they've been coming down. They Analysts have kind of been trailing the stock in their forecast, but they are still above where Rocket Lab is today. Significantly average one-year price target over $8 per share, which is over a double on a one-year term that would be a very good return for anyone looking to buy today basically uh the simply wall street uh, you know i don't put a ton of stock into their dcf in the fair value range but i did think going over the dcf of the space stocks community was interesting and you know maybe i can take some information from it i will have to dive into it a little bit deeper and see what kind of margins they're looking at and why they seem to think that based off of more revenue, they land on a more conservative uh, valuation number for the company. So that's it for the analysis today. As I said previously, this was pretty much just me doing some research while filming and sharing my own thoughts going along. Uh, don't really have a set conclusion here, but I did find it interesting how that community space stocks discord DCF had you know, lower had higher revenue numbers than me, but you know, worse margins to land on a worse uh, potential return down the line, although still positive. So maybe I need to take a look at my margins more closely or take a look at uh, what their assumptions are. Definitely uh, interesting to compare how other people value things. And as an analyze says in their channel, don't just buy it because someone else on YouTube says you should. Uh, do your own numbers and, you know, make your own assumptions and have your own value for the company. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, I hope you consider subscribing. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.